that's me. Hello everyone, I'm back. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I made a, well, I would say beautiful, but it's not really meant to be, depiction of a dried up lake or watering hole, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's not quite dried up, but uh, it's a very uh, dry looking desert scene with lots of cracked earth. Um, it's my first attempt at using cracked earth. Um, texture paint so uh, let's see how it goes well I know how it goes you don't but I do uh, so I started off with this uh, box which I made um, out of um, balsa wood sides and it's got extruded polystyrene base and then I put paper newspaper scrunched up in the bottom and then covered that in uh, plaster bandage and now I'm just going to put over some sculptor mold to build up the surface even more. The texture I like to go for is thicker than a kind of cottage cheese. Um, it's kind of, um, it's quite stiff, to be honest. Um, I find it dries quicker, but it gives me enough working time. Um, it's a messy business sculpt mold, so just be warned of that. Um, you carry on smoothing it over. It does take a while, as I say. This is why I do it quite thick. So um, even when it's you know fairly dry, you can just wet your finger and keep smoothing, smoothing it over. Putting on a bit more here now that I'm happy with the the uh, landscaping, because I'm going to put some rocks in. I use bark for these rocks, which is uh, quality landscaping bark from your kind of home improvement store. Uh, DIY store, whatever you want to call it, wherever you live. Uh, so now I'm going to cut the sides of the box. Now I'm happy with the shape of my landform. I'm going to cut the sides off the box. I'll keep these bits of balsa wood because I don't like wasting anything. Um, I even wash out the cups I use the, so that I don't use. I use those kind of single-use plastic cups for mixing and things, but I actually wash them out. Um, even if they've got resin in, I'll wipe them out. I'll put some isopropyl alcohol in them and I'll wipe them out. Um, and that's something we all must do. Uh, and here is me just cutting away the sides of the balsa. Now it could, it can split. This did actually split, but that's okay because you can just glue it. There's a little split down in the corner that I'm pointing at the screen. You can't see me pointing, but I am down in the bottom um, kind of right corner. There was some. A little split but I managed to fix it with some glue masking tape etc now I'm putting over some white gesso paint which just allows the paint I'm going to put over the top of that to have an even surface it's also got a bit of a key to it so it, it stays quite nice the paint actually fixes nicely now this is just a you know a mix of paint I think I used a sand color and then uh, an earth color by Vallejo uh, the sand color was actually another cheaper acrylic um, I don't go in for too expensive paints because I always water them down usually they never but the only paint I really use is for for rocks and you know for washes and things like that now this was the uh, deco art um, texture paint it's um, crackle paint depending on how thickly you put it on you'll get different sizes of cracks so I wanted a bit of a gradation so I wanted it to be thick in areas and not so thick in other areas so I wanted really quite deep cracks um, especially around the edges or on the hills where it's going to be the driest um, and then around the lake I wanted slightly smaller it's not really a lake it's a pool it's lighter cracks so here you can see what it looked like before uh, some areas at the top there I'm just showing you there which are much thicker they're really quite gloopy now you can see the cracks. I should have showed you a picture of close up of what it looked like afterwards, but this dried after about, I'd say give it 24 hours, a bit more maybe for the bigger cracks. You get some really nice effects there. I painted it over, I started washing over it with brown, but then decided to go over it with black um, over the top of that. And actually the, the look that I got from both of those mixed together was quite nice. So that's an undercoating there. Um, 
uh, to, to accentuate the cracks. It's like a wash. And then I went over that with a slightly thicker wash of um, kind of a sandy browny colour. Uh, as you can see, the black or oh, well, the grey kind of wash has really gone into those cracks and bits I've picked out individual plates of the crackle paint there to give a look of where it's been so dry that it's broken away and it's darker in there just to bring those out to make it pop I mean you, you don't have to go for ultra ultra realism because I think in a model this small when you go for ultra realism it can end up looking oddly enough not quite as real I've said it before but sometimes just accentuating or exaggerating bits can make it look a little bit more real bringing a bit of pop to the color just gives it a bit more here's some um, this is epoxy it's two part epoxy i didn't show me pouring it because well that's boring but uh, i used a very very small drop of green ink in there uh, to tint it this is going to be obviously for the water uh, also the green tint lends a, it lends a murky look but it also lends a little bit of depth it also hides some of the detail underneath because you don't want you know you don't want to see all of the detail through the water you want to get an impression of it um, it also lightens some of that dark or it gives it a bit more different tint so it really makes it stand out but in a very naturalistic kind of way again it's that popping color but naturalized. I use a very, uh, I use a blowtorch, a very small little blowtorch to get rid of some of those bubbles. I'm popping a few more bubbles here and also spreading it out a bit along the edge of the resin to get rid of that lip. Uh, the blowtorch just pops the bubbles. You don't want to heat it up too much though because it can, I don't know if it can ignite. I haven't ignited it so far but I have seen it pop, uh, I mean bubble too much. I have seen it heat up the resin so much it starts to cure and then it starts to steam and it ruins everything. Um, I'm sure you could ignite it, so be very careful. Going over with a bit of red or pinky kind of colour to bring out a few more of those shades in there, especially on the rocks. I usually use the leopard spotting on rocks, but these ones I didn't bother because I wanted a very dusty, sandy, kind of reddy kind of look that you can't really get um, with the leopard spotting technique of the washes. Woodland Scenics uh, coarse turf here, this is there. Uh, it's not olive green what is it green anyway one of their greens <laughs> um and i just a uh, burnt grass that's it burnt grass uh, i just put a little bit around that where i felt like it and then i soaked that in isopropyl alcohol and then scenic glue which is two parts matte medium no three parts matte medium one part water and a little bit of dish soap in there as well and now these are sea foam bushes which i've uh, covered in knock leaves and I just put those in uh, glued those against the rocks there to give it a little bit more interest I guess um, and now this is weathering powder this is a kind of a muddy greeny color which I just uh, add around the uh, sides of the lake to show uh, just a little bit or uh, where the water may have you know has been drying up and it's creeped back down into the hole so there we go that is my diorama my little cracked earth dried up pool um, climate change diorama thank you very much for watching um, I really really enjoyed this I put it in a display box at the end I was very very happy with it it was always designed to go in a display box but I'm going to be making more in display boxes from now on and there it is Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Cheers.